and I don't know that it allows us to turn people into higher powered beings. But these are the main headings, and it's a spreadsheet. I'm not expecting you to read the detail here, but at a foundation knowledge level and at a practitioner, um, enabling people to actually use this and, and gain experience at both of those levels. And there are qualifications now in Agile based on these. Okay, so a few. It's quite a lengthy spreadsheet. I won't show you all of it. Okay, and that's generic to all Agile approaches because of where it came from. But which Agile approach is best? Which one should we use? The million dollar question. I'm not going to give you one straight answer. It depends on the project. Is this a simple project? Is it a simple environment into which we're delivering this? Is it a product development that we're doing and an ongoing thing? Or are we delivering, delivering projects within programs to try and achieve strategic goals? Have we got a full project life cycle or are we really just doing ongoing maintenance? Okay, and you need a much more corporate strength approach if you're putting things into a project or a program environment. If you're doing maintenance in an ongoing way, then probably you know, something like Scrum with a backlog will be sufficient. But it's a judgment. If you've got lots of cross-project dependencies, again, you need some kind of framework <laughs> or structure so that we don't get an anarchy coming about. So do we need minimal formality? Can we get away with that? What is the corporate culture that we're feeding into? And what's the current leadership style? I have seen very, very agile projects in one very large insurance company that perhaps I won't, won't name, that was a little spin-off from another insurance company, which was very, which was the, the kind of bosses and leaders, really, very, very hierarchical, very stayed in its ways, very autocratic, <laughs> and there was a chasm between the two. And eventually, what happened was the autocratic style decided it could stand no more, and it took over the agility and organized it, shall we say, which actually almost stamped it out. So, which agile approach? In terms of a corporate approach, um, I don't know whether you will be aware, but just recently there was a report produced by a government think tank called the Institute for Gov Government, IFG. Um, the report's called System Error, and then something about what we can do to improve our systems is the subtitle to that. But if you Google System Error and IFG, or Institute for Government, you'll get the report and you can download it free of charge. And this was the government saying, what could we do to sort out the um, lack of uh, total success we have, choosing my words carefully, um, on some of our projects. And the report, which was actually published in March, came out with two very strong recommendations. One was, we have to sort out our infrastructure. The other was, we have to go agile. And it wasn't, you know, maybe think about it, it was, we have to do this. Now, it didn't tie itself to a particular approach, but it was recognizing that it needs the corporate structure, it needs the framework, it needs to keep some control while allowing the agility. And the APM group who um, sponsor Prince2 and um, put out all the qualifications for that, sponsored a new qualification in Agile, in fact, uh, before this, released back in November, which is based on DSDM. Um, and so that has been recognized as the corporate approach, which is most likely to work in the autocratic organization that we're trying to move the culture to a more agile culture. And there are a variety of qualifications available. You can become an advanced practitioner in a generic agile. You can become an advanced practitioner in DSDM, in a turn, which is the latest version. And you can become an agile coach with certification um, some of it will be exam based, some of it will be experience and interview based, but you can get those qualifications. And the benefits of doing that, I mean, who wants it? Let's look at the user story for Agile qualifications. As an individual, I need an Agile qualification so people know that I know my stuff. As an employer, 
I need the Agile qualifications to be there so that I know who I'm employing. If someone has an Agile qualification, it doesn't mean they're great, but it does mean something. It means they have some level of knowledge which I can't necessarily guarantee with another person who seems fine but doesn't have those qualifications. So how do we recognize an Agile leader? There's a certain style that we can see, but how do we recognize that a person has that style before we've seen them in action? We do need a framework for these Agile leaders to work in to make it effective, and we need to be able to distinguish a true Agile leader from the Decepticon. We have the Agile matrix of leadership, we have the various um, aspects of the framework and the roles and the products of a corporate strength agile approach in DSDM. And amongst other qualifications, the new agile project management qualification. It's the first agile management qualification in the world. There is another one coming from stateside ooh, sometime back in the fall, I think, next fall. Um, but this is the first one and this is foundation and practitioner levels and have a look at the APM Group um, website or have a look at the DSDM website for details. But again, if you're employing, you will be looking for these things. If you are looking to be working in an agile situation, you will start being asked for these things. So, our ideal, we don't want to be working for a Megatron and we want to help to change that culture. Optimus Prime has charisma, has vision. And hopefully we now have some weapons, the Agile matrix which you can look at, the matrix of leadership, and we have qualifications to spot the Decepticons. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to leave the last word to Optimus Prime. <coughs> And after that, the floor will be open for some questions. So. Thank you, all of you. You honor us with your bravery. Permission granted, old friend. You speak now? I wish to stay with the boy. If that is his choice. Okay, as you see, we couldn't get Optimus Prime to be here today, but he sends you his best wishes um, and uh, <laughs> sent me along to see if I could uh, answer any questions or help in any way. Okay.